Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for Red Hat Summit 2023. I'm John Furrier with Paul Gillen, kicking off day two, live streaming, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Christian Uber, who's the CTO of ETOS, subsidiary of Bosch, is here, customer of Red Hat, in a cutting edge automotive industry where Edge is the big store. Christian, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So big keynote, automotive, big market. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't get any edge than computers on cars mm -hmm, with software. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, the key challenge in automotive? Because that's an area that's obvious. We see yes. all the cars, electronic, more gadgets, more software. Yes. yes. So it's a very diverse landscape. Um, I think the biggest challenges with regard to software we currently see with the traditional big OEMs, and for them the biggest challenge is um, development and integration speed and stability. So it's not unusual for them to have week-long or even month-long integration cycles. And we know from other industries uh, that the faster you iterate, the faster you deploy to production, the more efficient your software development process is. And this is a new experience for automotive. We have coming from safety, coming from manufacturing uh, processes uh, which rotates a little or iterate a little slower and getting through that, bringing the newest technology into automotive while maintaining a high safety level, that is the biggest challenge right now. The theme here this day is scalability, efficiency, yes. obviously edge, industrial edge. Automotive is a great use case because it represents the most tactical edge you could imagine. Yes. It's moving, yes. get telemetry, different towers, where's the signal coming from? What is yes. the operating system behind? What makes it all work? It's so fascinating, it's like automotive. Well, I think uh, currently the operating system is not yet there. We're getting there, so we have a range of highly optimized uh, special solution like real-time operating system for microcontrollers. We have um, operating systems for high safety on vehicle computers. We have new players like Red Hat entering the vehicle, which is really exciting, and um, they're catering different, um, different uh, user needs right now. And this is all coming together. What we all want eventually, maybe at the end of the decade or longer, is that um, deploying onto a car feels more like deploying on a cloud environment. You don't have to know the specific hardware it's running on. You have some attributes that describe the requirements of the automotive function. You deploy it either in the cloud or on the vehicle, and there is much less friction in between. A lot of uh, customers say um, the next generation of software-defined vehicles, they don't think as a car in the cloud, but they try to think the vehicle from the cloud perspective and making a lot of design decisions inside the vehicle from that perspective, and this is really exciting. Well, what, does, what are you specifically doing with Red Hat technology in the vehicles? So we came together um, when we um, um, got notice of uh, Red Hat's ambitions to provide a safety certified version of Linux, and there's a huge market demand for that right now. Um, because there's not, not so many options right now in the market to choose from if that is what you need. And um, what is interesting for us um, with regard to Red Hat's competencies is they did for two decades now a great job of balancing uh, high stability and keeping the systems up to date uh, incrementally over time completely hassle-free. And this is something that also automotive um, um, companies want nowadays, they, they don't want to think in like, we have a four year cycle, then a start of production, and you start from scratch with every cycle, but they want a continuous uh, incremental update um, over decades eventually for the vehicles, and then you need competencies like Red Hat, and because of that, Red Hat is really an interesting partner for us. What do you guys do for, for specifically with the technology? Can you share your company's core competency? What, is you guys, what do you guys deliver? Yes. Um, so our whole portfolio is um, real-time operating systems, middleware, development tooling, measurement hardware. It's all the things that an automotive developer needs to um, not only develop, but road release automotive functions, including highest degrees of safety and so on. This is our uh, core expertise. And um, we're developing this further right now in the direction of uh, how do you do large-scale data-driven development. This is coming from ADAS and AD, where we have like multi gigabit per second uh, sensor um, arrays, a lot of data coming in, and huge challenges to, to uh, make these systems safe for road release. You sometimes have, for example, um, situations that you get in front of your cameras or sensors every 100,000 miles. And this was your chance. And what you need in that such a situation is a very deterministically behaving 
um, operating system and middleware so that you can replay that same data over and over again until you have fixed it, put it into your CI infrastructure for regression tests, uh, and move on from there. And this is something uh, which is currently in the vehicle, which is a very distributed place with many projects running in parallel, not happening, and this is where we help, where we bring the newest technology which was developed in uh, Bosch uh, Automated Driving to the market via ETAS, and now also in the future together with Red Hat. What is the status of fully autonomous vehicles at this point? It seems like five years ago there was an expectation that we wouldn't, we wouldn't, yes. we wouldn't have to drive anymore by 2030. I don't hear anyone saying that anymore. Well, um, <laughs> the normal answer is always, in about two years it's going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and in about two years it's, it's going to be no, here. This is the year of... <laughs> but, um, to be honest, um, it's an amazing uh, hard to fix long tail problem. So it's very easy, you can go to a uni university and within three months you have something that drives, drives uh, awesome, but um, to really cover the long tail, like seven, eight, nines behind uh, in, your, your, in your certainty that this vehicle is going to be safe under all conditions, it is a really tough problem. Mm. And um, I think we will solve it in this decade, and I think uh, the range of companies capable of doing this will be one or two. One or two? Yes. Will, will ETOS be one of them? ETOS is not doing uh, level four systems. Them not, right. we, we just support Third people building this. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't wonder if it's really, if you go by who's actually having this at scale on the road all the time in a commercially viable fashion, not in the sense of uh, a vehicle costs you 300,000 uh, euros or dollars, but in the sense of, hey, this is here now and you see it everywhere. I wouldn't place my bets on this decade that this is coming uh, in, in scale. Oh well. Uh, you said uh, dur uh, during your keynote that you think 2024 will be a, a, a turning point. There'll yes. be a new generation, new architecture for yes. software-defined vehicles. Yes. What do you think that will look like? Well, I think uh, some of the technologies in the vehicle, especially for the highest safety uh, levels, they are here to stay. They're proven in use, they work, do their job. But they're not suitable for highly iterative, fast development. And um, this is what we talk about when we say software-defined vehicle. Software-defined vehicle is not just a different software stack, it's an OEM's capability to continuously uh, update the vehicle uh, all the time, in a very short cycles. And with regard to these stacks, there are many, many options right now in the market. If you look at, for example, Eclipse STV, uh, AD members by now, everyone is contributing their stuff, and there is a lot of things to choose from, and we will probably not get out of this with the traditional methods of the automotive industry, like building committees, uh, standardization, uh, or joint ventures, and so on. This is all going to take at least two years. Mm -hmm. And in two years, uh, the manufacturers believe they will be gone from the market in uh, attractive Asian markets or also versus new competitors in the US if they don't act now. And so there are a lot of uh, interesting behind the doors discussions right now in the sense of Hey guys, let's decide for one of the stacks that is good enough. We we'll put several million vehicles of volume behind it. Then we're going to say, hey, this is our stack. For the next uh, couple of years, we are going to support this. Who's going to take over what responsibility? And uh, not in the sense of you, I, I give you something, but really in the sense of safety, security, supply chain security, and so on. And then you compile a stack of things and make a decision. And I think this is going to happen within the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. Christian, why the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system, and why is that a fit with ETOS? Can you explain that? Yes, so first, um, we have to give safety guarantees to the higher layers. So from an OS, we need to understand very well uh, what is the scope of safety guarantees I'm getting, and what can I build on top of this. And so far, there was no vendor in the Linux ecosystem who we could have really reliable discussions with, or, or, or discussion with in the sense of that we believe this is going to work. When I first talked to the Red Hat guys, I had that impression. So the whole approach, like not certifying once, certifying with a big focus on automation, to certify it continuously, with a big focus on very well-defined scopes of operation, I immediately understood they, are know, they know what they're talking about, and this is why they are now an interesting partner for us. We get the competencies to make that work, and we get also a continuously updated 
business model, delivery model that is well aligned with what our customers expect from us in the future. How is, are, are the cloud and the in-vehicle operating systems uh, converging? Uh, what, what role does the cloud play in managing these increasingly uh, automated vehicles? That's an interesting question. So we have uh, seen a large range of discussions. So the most extreme position was, let's have something like Kubernetes uh, in the vehicle. And um, we found out it solves a lot of pr problems you don't have in the vehicle, but it doesn't solve problems you have in the vehicle. Especially, um, you cannot scale out if you hit a resource limit. Hmm. You have to live with that. You have to degrade, you have to kill uh, processes and so on in a very well-defined behavior if safety is important for you. And so, I believe we need a low barrier between cloud deployment and in-vehicle deployment, but it doesn't have to be necessarily the same technology. So we're seeing uh, interesting things emerging there right now that cater to the demands of a resource-constrained vehicle, but use, for example, the same YAML description mm -hmm. for the automotive functions that you deploy in the vehicle, and you can, as, <laughs> as they are, you can immediately deploy them to the cloud and back and forth. And I think that is uh, a very uh, attractive option going forward. It's interesting, YAML comes up a lot, and, and there was a demo yesterday where there's no YAML in it. We yes. were joking, hey, you got to get your driver's license for the self-driving yes. car, pass yes. the YAML test. No, only kidding. But as ease of use comes in with yes. the car functionality, the interaction with the human yes. is going to be a very interesting enablement. Yes. How do you view that when you look at the roadmap with Red Hat? You got a lot of open source movement with AI right now. Yes. How do you see that middleware enabling a user experience where the human mm -hmm. might even not be driving, but maybe yes. minimal interactions? What's your vision there? Well, I think, um, especially in a safety critical context, a set of well, chosen constraints um, enable a lot of uh, uh, trying out things. So what you can do with middleware, for example, you can secure that the system is always in a well-defined state and you can trust it. And if you give that in a very high confidence level, you can enable users to try a lot of things. Like deploy your own AI model as an end user because you you scan the video images coming in, you have some idea, you want to monitor maybe birds or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I, I cannot foresee all of this, but what I can make sure is that I build a safe platform that you can uh, play on top on. And I make sure that you don't interfere with the safety state of the vehicle, and that enables a lot of creativity facing so the, the user. They can bring the customization, could be playlists yes. for music, it could be some computer vision. Yes. Whatever foundation model they want to bring in, but you have a hard top. Yes. Secure. So what we make sure is that um, we give you a safe uh, deployment platform that you can try out new things, even as an end user, if the OEMs want to enable this. And um, but this is going to grow in these ecosystems. This is not what we predefine. We just make sure that it's safe and uh, operates as intended. How open have the automakers been to the idea of open source, of open sourcing? their innovations yes. as, you know, as it develops the way the software industry has. We have seen an interesting development. Uh, I think a couple of years ago it was this new thing where, you, where no one is accountable and they didn't uh, want it. And uh, it developed over time. Then it was like uh, purchasing organizations okay. seeing, hey, um, this can be more cost effective. Can we have this open source and so mm -hmm. on. It became a strategic discussion and nowadays it changed again in the mm -hmm. sense of, hey guys, uh, we have a problem, we have a fractured ecosystem, we're not delivering to our customers right now, it's too late for standardization, it's too late for joint ventures, couldn't we work together more, uh, more, more quickly, more efficiently, more effectively in an open source kind of environment? Like, we don't have to sign off anything, we just put in our stuff, we need people who support us with that, and then we move on. That's and great. this is the current state of open source discussions, and I really welcome that. Talk about the roadmap with Red Hat. As you look at the edge, it's going to develop very fast. Mm -hmm. If it develops as fast as AI is kind of coming down the road, so to speak, you're going to probably see a lot more speed, yes. agility, and, and latency is a huge issue at the edge. Yes. And so all these things are coming together. What are the core issues when you look at the edge as it develops? What are, what are some of the core things that need to happen quickly to keep advancing and get into a position where it's continually reliable, stable, and, and programmable? Well, I think we need something uh, 
with a container-like experience, but with the safe, same level of uh, assurances and guarantees you get in the classical ecosystems which iterate too slow. I do not believe it's necessary um, to be slow if you want to assure these things. There is a lot of potential we haven't tapped into yet, um, especially, for example, the deployment model. In a container, you bring all your own dependencies. You don't have a complicated web of uh, dependencies that you need to agree on with your, with your colleagues, what library and what version. You just package it, uh, you have an outside interface, and that's it. It doesn't get more complicated than that. We, haven't, we are, aren't using that in uh, automotive so much yet, but we should. And um, especially also with the uh, infrastructure. Cloud native, coming to the edge. What? It's cloud native, coming to yes, the edge. Yes, and also with regard to supply chain security. If you hide your dependencies, you maybe open up new uh, security angles. An old library hidden in some container, but this is all transparent if you, if you do it right with the modern stacks. You have, you have versioned layers, you can see in your manifest, hey, um, this is outdated, I have to update it. You have transparent update mechanisms. There's a lot of potential we can tap into. So dependencies managed with yes. the containers, software yes. supply chain transparent, visible, yes. Yes. you know what you're dealing with, yes. it's a declarative environment, yes. secure, hardened top, yes. and then bring your own foundation model, bring your own AI yes. to the car. Yes. <laughs> Paul, Perfect. we just got the whole roadmap right there. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Christian, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Final question, what are some of the hallway conversations that you're having here as you give your talks and, and are talking about some cutting edge stuff, literally edge, what are some of the conversations you're having here with folks uh, at, here at Red Hat Summit? Um, I, I think the interesting one, uh, one is everyone is familiar with the range of options now and everyone uh, is trying to find out what's it going to be now? <laughs> what is going to be the next stack? How much Red Hat is going to be in there? How much of something else, Eclipse SDB or whatever? Um, and what, what's it going to be now? And I think um, it's a very interesting time. I think it will materialize very quickly. Christian Uber, e CTO of ETOS, part of Bosch, really kind of building that operating system in the, in the edge for cars, automotive, big sector. We all know what's happening. We see self-driving, we see electric, we see user experience changing. Bring your own AI into your car. I love that future. Soon there'll be flying cars uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the world. It's theCUBE coverage. Day two, wall-to-wall -wall live coverage. We'll be right back with our next guest. I'm John Furrier with Paul Gillen. We'll be right back. <laughs>